All right, everybody, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. I want to thank you for being here. I want to say I hope you've enjoyed the list. I don't know exactly what number of the top 10 this one will be because we're not numbering them. But these are the 10 greatest New Zealand All Black rugby players of all time. Michael Jones, Sir Michael Jones, was a player that I didn't get to see personally play a hell of a lot. His career was, was blighted by injury, but we will get into that. Michael Jones, Michael Nico Jones, was born in Auckland, New Zealand on 8th of April, which is my sister's birthday, believe it or not, 1965. He was listed at 1.85 metres tall, which is 6 foot 1, which is my height, believe it or not, and 98 kilograms, or 216 pounds. Michael Jones was named as All Black number 882 when he made his debut in 1987. Michael Jones played a total of 55 test matches for the All Blacks between 1987 and 1998. Although due to having two serious knee injuries, one in 1989 and one in 1997, and a broken jaw in 1993, he only played 55 matches when the team actually played close to 90 during that time. Michael Jones was always considered the top pick during his career, although due to those injuries he missed you know, almost 40 matches, which is tragic really. Michael Jones played as a forward on the team, but had the skills and the pace of a back. He scored 13 tries in his 55 matches, which was a lot. For a forward at the time. In the year 2000, Michael Jones was voted the third greatest New Zealand All Black to play the game ever, behind the great Colin Pine Tree Meads, which is also on this list, and Sean Fitzpatrick. John Hart, ex All Black coach and ex Auckland coach, when he first selected Michael Jones to the Auckland provincial team, was quoted as saying he was the almost perfect rugby player. Michael Jones, as well as Sean Fitzpatrick, was a member of the dynasty uh, Auckland Provincial Rugby team. And uh, I'm just going to run through a few of his titles here, which he, he won most of them with, with Sean Fitzpatrick, as well as a few other legendary All Blacks. We've got, between 1985 and 1999, Auckland won nine provincial titles, five Super 6 championships and defended the Ranfurly Shield a record 61 consecutive times. Now, <laughs> that, is, that, that, that is absolutely ridiculous. That means that Auckland were unbeaten at their home ground for 61 consecutive games between 1985 and 1993. And Michael Jones was an important part of that. Just like a lot of players on this list, Michael Jones was more than just a rugby player. He was a, a pillar of strength, especially for the uh, Pacific Island community in New Zealand. Uh, he is of Samoan heritage, and he also coached the Samoan national rugby team from uh, 2004 to 2007. Uh, Michael Jones played for New Zealand between 1987 and 1998, and in 1990, three years into his All Black career, he received a New Zealand medal for service to the Pacific Island community. So even that early in his career, he had a mission outside of rugby. You know, he knew that his position in rugby was, was going to be worth more than just the game. In 1997, nearing the end of his All Blacks career, Jones was uh, inducted into the New Zealand Order of Merit. And 20 years later, he was knighted and became Sir Michael Jones for his contribution to the Pacific Island community uh, in New Zealand and around the world actually. In fact, I just had a little story here. There wasn't much information on Wikipedia about his knighthood and uh, there's just a quote here from the great Sir Michael Jones and, and uh, it starts with he felt his work was a calling and said rugby had, had been a great platform for him that allowed him to give back to his community. When I retired, I knew I had to steward the gift of being an All Black 
and use it wisely and effectively, particularly to contribute to my community and in doing that, contribute to society. As what is good for Māori and Pacific people, it's good for New Zealand. Having a mother who demonstrated those values of giving back every day of her life was a huge part in shaping that in Jones, he said. That was in 2017, only two years ago. Michael Jones has always been one of the greatest rugby players of all time, and it seems that didn't just start when he started playing provincial rugby or All Blacks rugby, because I read here that uh, his talent for playing was discovered early, very early, as a 10-year-old tackling 15 to 18-year-olds. You know that kid, you know that kid in the team, that kid in the team that's just bigger than everyone else? Well, he didn't play in that team, he actually played in the team above and above and above that to try and, I guess, test himself. He went to Henderson High School and is credited as being one of the main reasons why uh, they turned that team from being a very mediocre high school into one of the most successful high schools in New Zealand rugby. Uh, Michael Jones was not just a rugby player, he's everything we've talked about, but he's also a very, very smart man and he has uh, three degrees under his belt. Now how many, how many professional athletes do you know that have three degrees? They might have one. Well, they might have two, but they, not many have three. And so that is uh, just another, another feather, feather in the cap, I guess. Um, this man, Michael Jones, absolute legend. I don't have any particular, uh, I don't have any personal stories on the man, but what you will see is some video excerpts from this, this DVD that I've managed to acquire. It's absolutely fantastic. It's gonna give you a, a nice rundown with some nice footage, good quality footage, which is important of the great man, Sir Michael Jones. So sit back, relax, enjoy. And I wanna say, go All Blacks for their first match against South Africa in the 2019 Rugby World Cup. Let's go. Grant Fox kicks out, it's 16 points to three. And the Pumas have had a good 10 minutes now but here's the New Zealand team in action again. Ah, this is the tactics that beat the French. Stolny waits. Oh, we let it go. Jones under the posts. Arguably, until the arrival of Richie McCaw, Michael Jones was generally considered to be the greatest ever all-black open side flanker. Certainly, Jones matched McCaw for pace and athleticism, and this combined with a fierce tackle and the ball skills of a midfield player made him one of the most naturally gifted players of all time. I can't, uh, I can't blame you, I can't blame Scott, he's a rugby player, but look at the speed the black shirts are approaching. Oh, there's a bit of uh, obstruction went in. Jones got the bounce and in with a dive under the posts. Unfortunately, Jones' career was marred by serious injury. In particular, he suffered a knee problem in 1989, which kept him out of the side for over a year. However, he never lost his strength and commitment and his ability to break a tackle. Coming on the All Black side, Shelford, up to Kerwin, Jones, Michael Jones, and Michael Jones does it again. And that's his second for the day. And the All Blacks have scored 10 tries in the Test match this afternoon. Here it comes again, and Jones was very lucky here. He shouldn't really have been bowled, but great balance too. He weaved and dummied and found it very easy to go in. Getting very easy now for these good forwards. Another headache for the selectors was the fact that Jones refused to play rugby on a Sunday due to his religious beliefs. This became an issue, especially during a World Cup. In 1991, he was unavailable for three matches which led to him not being picked for the 1995 tournament, as the quarters and semi-finals were scheduled for a Sunday. And Michael Jones has scored it. Oh, and there's some uh, rough house footwork in there from one of the players. Kerwin. Jones. Now, did he get there, referee? Lawrence says he has. So Jones scores one in the left corner and now one in the right. Ashby tapped by Cole. Oh, Jones! That's the hat trick of tries for Auckland's blanker Michael Jones. 
Despite not being available for some of the World Cup fixtures, Jones still made his mark at the tournament, scoring the opening try of the inaugural World Cup against the Italians. Shelford, tight hit, Ellen Wetton, Fox, in pass, and the first try! And again, scoring the opening try in the victory over the French in the final. Grant Fox trying the drop goal, it's bouncing loose on the French line, the pick up by Jones, and Jones is through for the first try of the match. And to complete the hat trick, Jones scored the opening try of the tournament in 1991, this time against the English. That was beautifully done. And there's the first try, Michael Jones in support. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go and play that. Take you down, I'ma say that. Money me a couple dollars. Telling you now this payback. Huh. So I'll take that. Ask them now, we'll say that. I've been going to the top and I got what they not, so I know that they hate that. Uh, but I'm on now.